Hopefully that was in the thumbnail. Um, there is a crossover event going on on YouTube right now where a bunch of um, math YouTubers uh, are talking about their favorite numbers over one million. Um, this channel doesn't really concern itself with math, but I do talk about units of measurement quite a bit, uh, which leads me in to this number. Uh, the number should be 10 million, but instead it is 10,001,965. Uh, the reason for this is that the basis for the meter is supposed to be the distance from the equator to the North Pole divided into 10 million units. Uh, during the French Revolution, the idea, several ideas were floated around for what should be the basis for the meter. Uh, one was a standard pe pendulum length, uh, because a pendulum will swing in one way at a fixed set of time. So if you define the time very accurately, you can define the meter very accurately. Uh, the reason, you know, there are several reasons why that uh, didn't come to pass. The one that they did choose is the distance between the equator and the North Pole. Well, you know, that seems kind of arbitrary. I mean, why pick that particular kind of measurement? And this leads into one of my pet peeves about units of measurement is that people think that everything about the metric system was brand new and invented there on the spot. But this idea of interrelated units is really very common even in the imperial system. Um, in metric that uh, you will take, you know, 10 centimeters and build a cube 10, centimeter, 10 centimeters on each side and that will be equal to one liter. Well, I mean, that's not a new idea. I mean, if you take a cubic palm and do it in four, you know, three directions, that a cubic palm worth of water is going to be a pint. Well, in the metric system, if you take a liter, fill it with water at a standard temperature, that will be equal to one kilogram worth of weight. Well, that's not that different than what's going on in the imperial system, that a pint is a pound the world around. If you take a pint, fill it water, it'll be equal to one pound. Um, energy units, you know, that, you know, there's a energy unit in the metric system that you take uh, a kilogram worth of water and raise it by one degrees centigrade. Well, that's not that different than a British thermal unit, that you take a cubic palm of water, which is one pint, which is one pound, you know, raise that by one degree Fahrenheit, and that's a British thermal unit. So this interrelation of units is really nothing new. Um, you know, the, the metric system didn't come up with that idea. They borrowed that idea from units of measure that were already going on at the time. And that's the reason why they chose the distance from the equator up to the North Pole, is because it was already being used in... Uh, it was already being used in the maritime industry. Um, a knot is a unit of speed. A nautical mile is the unit of distance, you know, and minutes and seconds being a unit of time. Well, you can convert a nautical mile into angular measurements that one arc second worth of, um, you know, of distance on the celestial sphere is equal to a nautical mile. And if you travel one nautical mile per hour, that is traveling one knot. So if you do everything in base 60, you know, like this, uh, and you know, 90 degree angle, you know, 90 degrees uh, for the distance between the equator and the North Pole, and then divide those into minute, arc minutes and arc seconds, that would translate into minutes and seconds time-wise, and all of the units are able to convert to each other quite easily. Um, but in the metric system, there was this obsession about making everything decimal. Uh, so instead of, you know, a angle being measured from zero to 90 degrees, the angle would be measured from zero up to 100 degrees. Um, a, an hour wouldn't be 124th of uh, a day, you know, the hour would be one-tenth of the daylight hours. Um, a minute would not be 60 
minutes to an hour, but rather uh, 10 minutes to an hour. You know, and the units would break down on the decimal level. And the idea was that, you know, if you can get angular measurements, distance measurements, and time measurements to all be decimal, then you could do the exact same conversions that were being done already in the maritime industry. Um, so that is why they chose, you know, equator to North Pole. But this being the 1800s, they couldn't exactly send an expedition out to the equator and up to the North Pole, uh, keeping accurate distance measurements the entire length of the way. So what they did instead was uh, do a line along the prime meridian that cut through Paris and Spain, and then they extrapolated out the rest of the distance from there. Um, there was a you know years-long campaign uh, by you know two uh, two surveyors that went out and carefully surveyed uh, each of the distance along this meridian, um, and you know from that information. Um, they did surveyor points along the entire path, and then at each end, they anchored those points to the celestial sphere by taking accurate measurements against the sky. Um, over the course of these, you know, years, uh, very costly, uh, very, you know, extremely dangerous mission also because the French Revolution was going on at the time. Uh, it went over budget, um, you know, it went over schedule, but they actually did manage to accomplish it, except for one small thing, which I will get to in a bit. Uh, this defined the meter, uh, but in later years, it was discovered that the meter that they defined was not actually one ten millionth of the distance between the equator and the pole. It was equal to 10,1965 meters in between the equator and the pole. And, you know, if you read some websites, you get down this rabbit hole of why there was that error in the measurement. Uh, some standard theories on, you know, people that really don't understand the subject very much is that, oh, uh, you know, the Treaty of the Meter, they didn't take into account that the Earth bulges out slightly at the equator. Well, I mean, you know, the, the committee knew this perfectly well, and they did take it into account in their calculations. Uh, they even knew that it bulged, the Earth bulged out larger in the southern, you know, just south of the equator than did of north of the equator. They knew exactly where the equatorial budge was, and they did factor it into their calculations. Uh, another theory I've seen on websites is that the tools that they had at the time weren't accurate enough to get that kind of uh, precision in their measurements. Uh, but you know, this is you know only you know uh, what one, two, three, you know, uh, four significant figures, five significant figures. Uh, the tools that they had at the time easily could have detected that much of, uh, of an error in measurement. Two theories uh, of why this error measurement came to be. Um, about 10 years ago, a book was published. Um, forget the name of the author, you know how I am with names. Uh, but the title of the book was The Measure of All Things. And it was a historian who was able to track down the personal logbooks of the two surveyors who did the missions. And tucked away, just written in, handwritten as a note, you know, in a small passage, uh, one of the surveyors left a note to the other surveyor, or I, I don't remember the story exactly, he might have wrote it posthumously, uh, but it was essentially saying, oh, you know, don't worry about it, you know, for the Committee of the Meter, I will cover you for this particular aspect. And when the historian tracked that down more, he realized that one of the two anchor points at the end, where the, the surveyor marks, you know, measured the distance in between, but the celestial marks at each end, one of the surveyors had messed up the celestial mark. So it wasn't exact location of where the endpoint was supposed to be. Um, this surveyor, it nagged him and gnawed at him 
continuously for the rest of his life. And later on, he tried to go back to the place to get uh, a better, more accurate measurement and died while out on the road doing it. Uh, so, you know, that could account for the error in measurement that, you know, the one endpoint wasn't correctly anchored to the celestial sphere and, you know, all of the surveyor marks in between the two points were therefore useless. So he just took a best guess at the, you know, the marking for the celestial sphere and reported that in to the committee on the meter. Now, one of the more crackpot theories on this, though, is the idea that the Earth is actually getting larger, that the surveyors and the committee of the meter, you know, did absolutely fantastic job and get an absolutely exact measurement that did come out exactly to 10 million. But in the preceding two centuries, the Earth has grown so that there is now a, you know, the Earth being larger in size, there's now more meters in between the North Pole and the equator. Now, yeah, of course, there's no explanation on how the Earth is getting bigger, but uh, a lot like uh, the theory of the aquatic ape that uh, made rounds a few years ago, um, this idea does give a you know, a weird explanation for some of the more bizarre things going on in science. Um, you know, in paleontology, you know, study of dinosaurs. Uh, it's not really known how the dinosaurs that grew extraordinarily large were able to pump blood throughout their system. Um, you know, Brachiosaurus neck coming up, you know, there's just not enough pressure coming up the, the neck of the dinosaur that would get blood up to the brain. So they said, oh, well, maybe the neck isn't standing up, they're, they're downright, but, well, you know, studying the, you know, the, you know, the skeletal forms, it didn't seem as if the dinosaurs had their neck, neck held parallel. So it's not really known, you know, how blood would be able to circulate in dinosaurs. But if you think that the Earth was smaller, you know, several million years ago, gravity would be less at that time. So dinosaurs would be able to grow larger and, you know, their anatomy would make sense because they're operating in a lower gravity environment. Uh, plate tectonics is also this way, that, uh, you know, particular geological features are only found in a particular band. And if you push the continents backwards through time, they all form the continent of Pangaea. But some geological features, um, you know, particularly if you put Africa together with uh, South America, they line up and the geological features that end in South America will continue over into Africa, which tells us that, you know, these two land masses were connected at one point. Well, if you come from South America and go the other direction around the way, you know, they link into same geological features in Australia and in Asia. So if you think of Pangaea as not being a single landmass, but the Earth being smaller at that time, and Pangaea completely wrapping itself around the, the globe, uh, this would explain a lot of geological features. Um, but much like you know the theory of the aquatic ape, there's not really a strong scientific underpinning to this. Um, you know, there, there's no mechanism for how the Earth would be able to grow larger, um, you know, why we don't observe it on other celestial bodies. Um, you, know, you know, things aren't really lining up, you know, that way. You know, it only explains a few minor things that could easily be explained away the other, thing, other way. But expanding Earth would explain the extra digits on there. If it weren't for the fact that, you know, there's not enough time passed, two centuries, I mean, that would be, you know, 10 kilometers each year, or 10 meter, meters each year over the past 200 years. Um, you know, satellites and laser imaging from geostationary satellites would have detected that from this point of view. So the more plausible theory, is the theory put forth by that book 
that uh, of the the two men on the surveying mission, one of the men just made a mistake on one of the endpoints. So now, instead of you know a nice tidy round number that would allow you know uh, easy conversions, well, easy conversions if we were also doing a uh, hundred degrees in a right angle and a hundred minutes in an hour. If those had taken effect also, and if we had gotten an even 10 million instead of a number slightly off 10 million, all of the unit conversions, um, you know, in between distance and speed and position on Earth could easily be converted back and forth to each other. But uh, not necessarily my favorite number over 10 million, but since I do talk about units of measurement quite a bit, this is a number larger than a million that does talk about meters, the metric system, and units of measurement.